Hello. Um, is the time of the year, you know, the time of the year where you just start wondering everything about your life and rethinking all your problems and what's going on and all the decisions you made and you're getting ready for it next year. Uh, we love having this matrix feeling of getting a restart out of the universe. So here comes another YouTuber giving you a couple of predictions related to what might be the content creation phase for 2024. And I'm going to use my super fortune teller feelings and share with you what do I believe that might be the next level or steps related to content creation for the next year. First of all, I believe that 2023, also 2022, it was like... You know, when you're out of diet and you're just eating shitty food, let's say like right now in the Christmas time, and you're just like eating and eating a lot of things and you're just remembering like, oh, this is not healthy, but I'm stuck on this um, addiction of something that is shitty and it doesn't make any change or good in your organism body. So that was related to content creation. I believe since... The TikTok boom and the vertical videos boom, we, okay, that was fun, that was new, that was intriguing. People was like, okay, we can tell stories in one minute videos and then let's short it down, do it 30 seconds and then 15 seconds. And then you were scrolling um, and getting a ton of information in, in the time of one hour, two hours, whenever you were hooked and addicted. And in those hours you receive so many information from random people and random subjects and i think that was content creation a uh, big change in the last couple of years and i i was scared like i never like it i i would never like i know that can sound as a lie but i never got my phone and spent two hours in TikTok or Reels on Instagram because I just deeply hate it for some reason because I'm a videographer so and I love doing long form videos and I got so peace when IGTV was out. I was always a hater of vertical videos, not only vertical, but I mean this short form, this sugar uh, poison type of content, right? Things that were just fast and super, super intense and a lot of videos in, in a short period of time. And then it's okay when it's related to TikTok and Instagram's platform. But I was always a big fan of YouTube. I've always watched YouTube since I was a teenager. And I love spending hours in YouTube. Like I'm not doing anything, I'm gonna spend two hours on YouTube. And that was of course like early years when vlog era started and people were holding their camera around the city and just showing their day like Case Neistat and you know the gang and I just love that. I love looking into people's life and spending time with people that I not even know that live in a completely different city and live a completely different reality. It was like I could teleport myself to somebody's life and that's what I love about YouTube. Uh, back in the day and then recently in the 20s 2020s one two three youtube started to get boring right the whole mr beastification with the whole challenges and quick cuts and everything was just an explosion of emotions again in this platform that i love and 2023 was a lot of that a lot of this sugar content that makes you get hooked and that was the period when YouTube stopped being that much fun. It just it started to get a little bit boring. I, I was able to predict any video that I would see on the feed. I was able to know by the title and the thumbnail what it would be about. I, I wasn't interested anymore. It was becoming boring to watch YouTube, right? The thing of transporting myself to somebody's life was going into very short cuts every day one second and everything was just coming very fast in my eyes but what i'm seeing lately and i think it's going to be the 2024 new wave is that i saw channels and one that i like i love for example is life of reason 
that are channels that are very slow pace and calm and just show the raw of the real life, you know, like there is a storytelling as well. And then I found people like Ryan Eng and he once posted like a travel video where it was basically his whole footage, the whole raw footage, very dry with no music and crazy cuts. And I was seeing that it was something new being built on YouTube. And I got super happy when I see those channels exploding and gaining views and gaining a niche and finding their people, their audience. And I think YouTube slowly is showing me more and more people in the more raw situation, like very natural, where people are authentic. There's even this comedy channel that I don't watch the comedy videos, but for some reason, the second channel of the, the guy showed up on my feed, YouTube feed, and he was just basically getting like a timer, playing a video game and talking to the camera in the most raw and natural way with no cuts. And I, I got so intrigued. I was able to watch the whole video and be there and listen. And I think with this whole AI thing that happened in 2023, human, we humans, we are missing rawness. In real human feelings, not a script made by a artificial intelligence that just combine a bunch of spread out ideas into something, but something that actually comes out of a chest, something that feels real, that you can also connect in I believe the internet can capture authenticity. If you were being fake, this is just not gonna roll. I can feel it right away when I play a video and the person is fake as hell, you know? My point is that I feel like in 2024, content will be more raw, will be more touchable, and will be less fake. I hope for less cuts. I hope for less holding your attention because yes, I gotta do it. Otherwise, you're not gonna watch it. And less fighting against people's attention and explosion of content and very meaningless content, right? I hope that 2024, we are able to open YouTube and see more real people talking about real problems. And I don't think this is just hope and me connecting with the feelings uh, that I have for this platform, but I actually think that will happen. Uh, look to this Twitter with Mr. Beast itself saying that he's slowing down some cuts here and there, and he's adding more storytelling to his videos. And also TikTok recently posted that they're going to increase the time and the size of the videos and the platform going now for 15 minutes where now they, of course, can get more profit with that since you can add more ads, right? You can have one in the middle, in the end, and in the beginning of the video. But uh, with that, I hope that we push ourselves into having deeper connections with other creators in a way that we can spend more time with them. Like whenever you have somebody visiting your house, imagine if it was like TikTok, somebody comes and talk like 15 seconds with you and then you scroll down and somebody else come in your house and talk another 30 seconds and you scroll down, that would be insane. That would be like crazy. The way that we connect with people is that we just sit and we spend time. We look in their eyes and we listen to the silence and the empty space within a conversation. Recently, I was listening to this podcast that was Emma Chamberlain on Calling and Samir podcast, and I got annoyed a little bit because she had deep silence between things that she want to say, as if she was just thinking of what would be the next phrase. But that's how people are. We don't just ignore the pauses right and the silent whenever you were talking with a friend and yeah I I just think like 2024 we will slow down I think like every wave that you see within art or within the film industry it was just a face trying to fight the other whenever it was something that was very realistic then we have something more abstract fighting with it then we have Hollywood and we have the French new wave coming and say we don't need to be that 
born, you know, we can do things out of the norm. So I think within art history, human history, there's always contrast. And my hope for 2024 is that we have the contrast to the quick and fast paced content. And what that means for you, um, that means that if you are a creator like myself, you should just create a video where you just talk with your camera and you just create the bare minimum of cuts. You don't worry much about adding B-rolls to keep your audience connected. And you just hope for them to connect with you and the thoughts that you have to share, if they can create any value within whoever is listening to. So that gives you more pace and freedom and fun to create. And I also think that this is more slow it down type of content, it's more fun to do. I can just turn my camera on thinking that I'm just gonna connect with people instead of I'm gonna fight with people to watch whatever I have to say or share or teach with you. It's like I want to have a friend over but think that he's so busy with his agenda that he always say no, no, no and you're just hoping for one day you have a yes but instead just being that friend that comes and stays with you and drink a cup of tea and looking into your eyes and actually listens to everything you need to say. So that's what I hope for 2024 and that's what I think we are going towards. And I hope to see you there because I'm the person that will love to surf on this new wave. So thank you for watching this video and I hope you have an amazing 2024. And if you were part of my journey this year, if you found my channel early this year, in the comments add an emoji with an octopus here. I would love to see it. And I just hope that I see you in the next video.